private practice nutritionist in Mount Pistillo. And I've been in private practice for 20 years. And I've worked with dancers and athletes. So I'm very well versed nutritionally, you know, what the recommendations are for dancers. Um, and what I'd like to focus on this afternoon is really honing in on, you know, what can you do nutritionally to minimize injuries? Okay, I mean, many of you know that it's important to stretch, it's important to warm up, because all that helps in minimizing injuries. But there's a lot more that you can add to that through good nutrition. So what we're going to do is take a look specifically at what does the body require in order to prevent you know, injuries. Um, so let's start with protein. Many of you know that we need protein, but did you know that you need protein to help with repairing damaged muscles, damaged tissue? Okay, whenever you have damage done to muscles or tissues, your protein requirement goes way up. So it's very important that you start the day with adequate nutrition, and especially starting the day with good protein. Um, so let's take a look at how much protein we need. Um, there is a way to formulate that. Um, it's based on um, your body weight, okay, and your activity level. Um, if we start with, for instance, let's say your body weight is, you know, we all know it in pounds, but what you need to do is convert that to kilos, and one way to do that is to divide it by 2.2 um, to convert your weight into kilos, and then that's how many grams of protein you need a day. Okay, so let's say if your kilo weight was 50 kilos or 60 kilos, then that would be 50 or 60 grams per day. And just to give you an example, one egg is equivalent to 8 grams of protein. And for breakfast, what I usually recommend is anywhere from 15 to 20 or 25 grams of protein, okay, to start the day. And by starting the day with enough protein, um, it really helps sustain energy levels, and it also helps, you know, your mood later in the day. And you have much less fatigue if you start the day with adequate protein, okay? Um, so any questions on the protein? Everybody's clear on that? What are some other good sources of protein besides that? Okay, good question. So, so you can do, really your food here is very limited. Okay, protein bars provide your not soy-based protein um, because too much soy for women is not good because it, it throws off the hormones. It really is a hormone create. It's a hormone disruptor. Um, and then for guys, it lowers your testosterone levels, which is what you don't want. You're trying to put on muscle, so you don't want to work against that. What are your lactose concerns? Okay, we'll come to that. Hold, hold that question. Oh, yes. Is that all I drink is soy? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Why I'm not? Yeah. Intolerant. All right, so good. I'm glad this came up then. You know what you can do? You can either do almond milk or rice milk. Rice okay. Milk. So um, any of those would be very good. So alternatives. Why is almond milk good for you? Because it's a hormone disruptor. Okay. Like in men, it increases estrogen, and in women, it, it throws off the estrogen to progesterone balance. So you get more PMS symptoms if you do too much soy. So is it better to have skim milk or do you have the option of the As long as you don't have a dairy intolerance, exactly. Or even a 1%, because you do need a little bit of fat to absorb the vitamin A and vitamin D. Okay. So because the amount of fat that's in skim in 1% milk is very little. So that little bit is okay. So that's not a problem at all. So either a 1% or a 2%, and even better, just make sure that the milk is a hormone-free milk. That's the See, we don't have that much options, so would it be better than <laughs> Oh, I see what you're saying. I know, then you're still better off than that. It's like, as long as you don't have a I don't know, can you, can you do food suggestions to the, uh, okay. I don't know if you already went over this, but like, you, you were talking about grams of protein. How do we know, like, how much, how many grams of protein we're eating? Sure, okay, like an egg is eight grams. So two eggs would be, the, I mean, like 16 grams of protein. And then usually I have people, yeah, exactly, around 16, anywhere from 15 to 25. I mean, for, usually for the females, I usually recommend 15. And then for the guys, anywhere from 20 to 25 grams of protein. Okay, because the guys need more protein than women do, so that makes a big difference. Um, and then other sources of breakfast uh, for protein, so protein bars are another really good source. Um, if you have access to turkey sausages, chicken sausages, those are great proteins. All of them so you really have a lot of different choices. Protein powders, um, you can do an egg white protein, you can do a rice protein, you can do a whey protein if you don't have a dairy uh, intolerance. So that's another option as well. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I've heard like different things from different people about like the protein powders. 
like, in your opinion, that is that like okay to drink? I guess? Yeah, the protein powders actually I do recommend, provided they don't have a lot of junk in them, like Splenda or Equal in them. So just make sure that it's like a really pure protein. Yeah, and then you can add fruit to it. You can add other things to it. So that would be the thing that you're looking for. Because you know the advantage of doing the protein in a liquid form, the absorption is so much better. So you really absorb the protein a lot better when it's in a liquid form. It's in a pre-digested form, so it's much better absorbed. Okay, so that's really good. Because I know you don't have a lot of time between eating and then running off to your classes. So that is, that's why, because of that time issue, it's very important to do that. Um, have the protein in a liquid form, is, or in a very easy digestive. That's why the eggs are a good source, because eggs are very easily digested. Too, so that helps. That really makes a huge difference. Okay, good. So, all right, so now you know about the protein. So then the other thing is we do need to eat carbs. We shouldn't avoid carbs completely, unlike the Atkins diet, right? Um, so but you, it's important to know what carbs to eat because there is a difference with different carbs. So you want carbs that are complex. You don't want carbs that are simple. Does anybody know what the complex simple means? Mm -hmm. um, complex carbs are Very good. All right. Do you know what you think? Do you have an example? Okay, good, all right. So actually even better than whole wheat is to do whole oats. Like if you go for oat rather than whole wheat, that's actually even better for blood sugar. Um, you know, like brown rice as opposed to white rice. So brown rice is a complex carb, white rice is not. Okay, so that gives you an example. Um, sweet potatoes, yams, those are also complex carbs. And then rather than doing whole wheat pasta, it's better to do a brown rice pasta because the whole wheat will make you retain more fluid. And if you have more fluid retention in your legs, you're going to have more leg fatigue when you work out. So that makes a huge difference. That's really important. Say, say that again. Brown rice, brown rice pasta is better than doing a whole wheat pasta or a regular pasta. Because you don't have the fluid retention going on. You mentioned something about blood sugar. I guess it's diabetic. I want to be able to eat better because you're not very good at making it. So what are some foods that are like really good for him so that he doesn't have to like constantly be like going to this Okay, so that's why you're having a little bit of problems. Yeah, like, well, my dad literally will just eat whatever he does. Well, like, things from that point. Like, is there something he can eat that he doesn't have to give himself so much Oh, yeah, I think mean, if he did a better balance of his protein and carbs. So if he follows you know, if he balances out his protein and carbs, better, he wouldn't have to worry about his insulin. Yeah, so that's why you would need much less insulin. Yeah, so that's why you would need much less insulin. Yeah, that's good. You would need much less insulin. Yeah, that's good. But the whole wheat definitely spikes up for a lot. Some people, especially diabetics, they're uh, in the yeah, sure Oh, so then he's better off eating um, like an oat bran, like 100% oat bran bread, or like a brown rice bread. But you probably get that whole group, right? Yeah, exactly. Or Trader Joe's. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You said wheat pasta, isn't it like whole wheat pasta in the gut? It's not as good as doing a brown rice pasta because it makes you retain more water weight, more fluid weight. But what about machine? Regular white pasta. Uh, actually, the regular pasta, believe it or not, is better. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than brown. Than whole wheat. whole wheat. But brown rice is the best. Like, if you have a choice between rice noodles or regular noodles, always go for rice noodles. Like, if you're ordering Chinese, that's always a much better choice. Okay? So, that's a lot healthier, much healthier. All right, good. Yeah, then brown rice, of course, if you're ordering from a Chinese restaurant, is better than white rice. So, that's another option, too. 